Well, friends, the last few weeks have been filed under things they don't teach us in seminary. This fact may come as a shock to many of you. They don't teach us how to be pastors during a pandemic. They do, however, teach us how to gather our people together, how to love and care for them, how to lead worship, and how to celebrate the most holy of days. The three great days is Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil are collectively called are some of my favorite days in the church calendar. Each worship service is full of ritual and meaning. We gather as a community to wash each other's feet, receive communion, experience the solemnity of Good Friday, and hear the ancient stories of God's promises to God's people at the vigil. Tonight, Monday, Thursday, is a night full of ritual that calls us to human contact. And everything that makes Monday, Thursday special, we can't do together tonight. We live in the reality of social distancing, face masks, and no physical contact with other human beings. So friends, I am grieving that we can't be together tonight. I'm sure many of you feel the same way. It's odd to be standing here right now. Because as I look out at the nave, it is empty. Except for the few of us here to live stream this worship service. So I've been thinking a lot lately. How do we do Monday, Thursday when we can't be together? Well, let's look back at our scripture for tonight from John's gospel. Because again, Jesus has something to say to us now. After washing his disciples' feet and Judas leaves into the night to betray him, Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you are to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. What does love look like in this new reality we live in? Well, we need to examine what kind of love Jesus is talking about here. We forget that when Jesus washes the disciples' feet, he washes all their feet. Jesus washes the feet of Judas, the one who was about to betray him. Jesus washes the feet of Peter, the one who was about to deny ever even knowing him. When we read the love commandment through this lens of betrayal and denial, we see a deeper picture of the love that Jesus talks about here. Jesus loves these disciples even in the face of excruciating brokenness. Broken relationships that lead to betrayal and denial. This kind of love is difficult for us to imagine. Jesus' love looks past these broken relationships. And his love seeks to repair that which is broken. Jesus' love is more than we can ever imagine. His love is so great that nothing we do or say will change it. We are loved. Period. Friends, this is also love in a time of pain and separation. Jesus knew, as he said, love one another as I have loved you, that separation was coming. Jesus knew he would leave those he loved. We catch a glimpse of the last moments Jesus spends with his disciples here. Imagine the pain and sadness Jesus felt as he prepared the disciples for his 
departure. Just as there was pain for Jesus as he spoke these words, there's pain for us now. There is pain in how we are separated. It breaks my heart that I am separated from all of you. It causes me pain to be separated from my family. But what is giving me a little bit of hope is that though we are separated, love remains. In this case, we are separated out of love for one another. We separate from one another to care for one another. We maintain social distance to care for the bodies of our neighbor. That is what love looks like right now. This is the kind of love that Jesus is talking about here. Love that looks beyond itself. Love that cares for the neighbor. Sometimes the neighbor we've never met. I also find hope in another promise Jesus makes to his disciples this same night later in John's gospel. Jesus knew that in in a few days' time, his beloved disciples would quarantine themselves in a house. They would hide in isolation and in fear. So after sharing this commandment of love with their separation in mind, Jesus promises his presence through the Holy Spirit. And though this is not included in our scripture for tonight, we need to hear this promise from our God. Jesus says to his disciples, and us, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Just as the Holy Spirit would come to connect these fearful, isolated, and separated disciples to Jesus, the Holy Spirit connects us to one another and to God tonight. So yeah, Monday, Thursday, 2020 looks very different from what any of us expected. Maybe we can't wash each other's feet tonight or receive communion. But that doesn't mean we are loved any less by God or we aren't connected to one another. Yes, we might be separated, but that does not mean we are not connected. Reach out your heart to your neighbors. Love your neighbors as Jesus loves you. This is still our call as followers of Jesus. Earlier this week, Lynn Unger wrote a poem about connection, and she writes, Reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. We might be separated, but that does not mean we are not connected. As Paul reminds us in the letter to the Romans, nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Not even a pandemic. Because God loves you for who you are. Remember, Jesus loved Judas and Peter. You are deeply loved by God. You are not alone. You are surrounded by the love of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Amen.